Welcome to the Repo Nut channel once again. Beautiful sunny day up here. No snow this winter. Can you believe the one year I decided to finally put a shell on the back of my truck to keep the snow out of the bed and stuff? We have no snow. We're into the second week of January now and there's been, look at this, it's like nothing. There's no snow in here in Utah. End of the world, 2012. Or maybe we're just not having snow this year. Anyhow, we are tracking one that's GPS again. This is uh, number two for this one. The first time we went out and picked this lady up, uh, we hooked her Durango, made contact to get keys. She came out. We stood there forever until she finally made payment arrangements, and then we dropped it, got paid a full repo fee, and we got out of there. As I've uh, stated in many of my videos, that's my preferred way of repossessing. It doesn't always go down that way. If I could make it to where the majority of the time I got paid a full repo fee and never had to move the vehicle, I'd be the most profitable I could be, but it doesn't happen like that. I try to show as many of those as I can, and we're gonna try to get another one of those again today on her. She's actually at work though, and that makes it a little bit harder because it's in an open parking lot. That right there is the uh, Utah State Mental Hospital that she works at, and uh, that right there is Center Street coming in down in Provo, it's at the end of Center Street, it dead ends and then it curves and goes up towards this water park. But right there at the end of Center Street is the State Mental Hospital and that's where the vehicle is sitting in the parking lot. So we're gonna hook it and I really don't know what department she lives in and out of a courtesy, believe it or not, uh, I try not to go into people's work and, you know, knock and hey, where's this person work? And then ask a bunch of questions. I mean, I've done it in the past when I had to, but as a rule of thumb, if I can't easily contact the person, I'll try calling her on the number we have for her and if she doesn't answer I'm gonna have to leave without making contact and she's just gonna have to work out a ride home it's just the way it's gonna be uh, but I would prefer it be where we could pick it up get her to call into our finance company make the payment over the phone and then we just drop it right there at her work and we're done our job's over so we'll see which way this goes I'll try to have a couple different things try to get it all on video and go from there we've got four or five that have come over we'll work through each one of them this will be number one a couple of skips we've had some addresses come over on uh, Jake, Jake picked up a white Jeep for me that's uh, now in our impound and I had to pull the GPS, what was left of the GPS device, out because the guy that owned the Jeep found the GPS device. Had a phone call come in there, an actual important phone call. Uh, we just got an address on where one of our vehicles is sitting right now down in Orem, so we're going to run down there on our way heading towards this GPS one, so we're going to be driving right by it see if we can get this uh, skip picked up as well. So, good morning. Sun's up, there's no snow on the ground, there's uh, very little up in the mountains, and I'm having fun. Alright, so the information we got from the finance company is that the informant said the vehicle was sitting down here in Orem, about 2,000 south right off of this main road here and drove by and we don't see any green Honda Civics sitting right on the road anywhere. So we're gonna start, we'll get down here to the intersection. This actual four-way stop is 2000 South. I saw one vehicle that might be it. Oh, yeah, that's our plate right there. Right up on top of that hill. Bravo 643, it's a green Civic. It's a stick, I'm just gonna roll it right down that driveway because it's trying to back up that driveway with my lift. I'll be in a sharp incline and trying to get my lift up in there. Plus it's front wheel drive. I'm gonna back up here and pull over to the side of the road. So what we'll do is I'll back it down the driveway. It'll roll right across the street. And then I can back my truck right up to the nose of it. We wanna get it off the premises first if we can. It should be a stick, it's an automatic. I'll have to grab it where it's at and then make contact or we'll just drag it right down that hill. We're going to walk up right now and see if it's unlocked and if it's a stick. Let's see if we can execute this repo. It's open. 
e-brakes on. I'll put it in neutral and take that e-brake off. How was the workout? Traffic go by. Grab this thing from an angle.
We've got one flat tire in the front. It's making it not roll. We got one real low air tire in the rear. So I'm gonna pull the compressor out and fill this other rear one up and then we'll drop this and pick it up from the front and get it hauled off. Uh, that was quite the little driveway there. Luckily I got it rocking back and forth enough I was able to get past the flat spot on the tire and got it on the hill. Once it got on the hill, gravity took over and rolled it right out to the street and it stopped right there blocking lanes. Just keep working until you're done. Don't give up. Then we'll head over and get that GPS one. I'm gonna call a finance company right now though and let them know that this was a good lead and we got the vehicle. Looking for this guy for two weeks. No contact, got it right out of the driveway, down in the street, dropped, flipped my truck around, grabbed it from the front, we're going to get it dropped off at the mechanic because this one obviously does not run, had a GPS device in it which hasn't been working because the battery's dead, and they didn't do a battery backup in this one, so this one goes straight to the mechanic, and then we'll head over and get that GPS one, do that next on video. So we just exited here on Center Street in Provo and uh, pinged the GPS device again and it's still sitting right there in the main parking lot of the hospital where most of the employees park. I'm going to zoom in here on it so I can see exactly which parking lot she's in and what row she's on. And we've already repossessed this Durango once before so by the time I get to the end of this video I'll look up the name of the other video where we picked it up if you're interested in going and looking and seeing the first time we repossessed her at her house. But now we're going to be getting her down here at work. I think she even mentioned last time during the other video, I don't know if I edited it out or if it's in there or not, but she mentioned that she works here at the state hospital and stuff. So it should be, uh, we'll get rolling through here, downtown Provo. Once we pop out the other side, be a straight shot to the vehicle. Start getting some video of this thing. So as we're heading down Center Street here, I looked up the uh, video. Uh, first, I had to go look up when we did the repo so I could figure out when the video... I know it was pretty recently. It was on uh, the 4th of uh, November when we picked it up. And I pushed this video up uh, a couple days after that. It's called Volley Turns Into In Volley and In Volley Gets Dropped After Payment. And how could we forget those pants? This is the lady that I'm going to pick up right now. The Durango, second time. Just go right down State or, uh, Center Street here. We're at 9th East, right up against the mountains here. And as soon as we uh, go through this light, it's uh, pretty much a straight shot in Center Street. And at the very end of the road, we hit the hospital admin building, and then we hang a right, and we follow this parking lot around. And she's right there, parked in the top parking lot. So we'll turn off of uh, Center Street here. Center Street kind of turns and goes north up there and technically ends at this point. 
but they still call this Center Street going into the hospital property. So we're now on hospital property and they do have security here uh, that has um, patrols that roam around you know, for just different things and whatnot. There's no way to have a facility this big and not have a, a security group that kind of checks everything out and deals with a lot of the day-to-day -day crap, but they're also, one of their job callings is to make sure that repo men don't uh, get up in here and do what they do. They got a thing here that's for people that are going too fast. <laughs> oh, might get a speeding ticket at the hospital. All right, so we're right here at the admin building. We'll hang right here. I actually know this area pretty good because we picked up a number of vehicles from employees that work up here. Apparently these guys aren't paying enough. This is the second time we've had to take this one. And uh, like I said before, this isn't my first time coming up here. Get our cameras recording. Our backup camera. She's up here in the upper parking lot. We already know from previous experience that this Durango's rear wheel drive. It's not one of the all wheel drive ones. There it is right there. Second row over. Third vehicle in. I want to go out this way, so I'm actually going to go this way, whip around, and that way I'm passing the vehicle and aiming the way I want to go out of the parking lot. You're always thinking of stuff like that as you're rolling up on an, uh, uh, a vehicle and there's actually enough room to maneuver my way through the parking lot here and back between the vehicles and have a straight shot right to the back of her vehicle. That's what we're going to do. Line it up right here, one row over. our side mirrors and our backup camera. Verify our data before we actually start executing the repo. Yep, that's our vehicle. Ringo has the wheels that wheel turn on us, so we're gonna pull it forward here in the parking lot and then open it up and uh, secure the wheels so they don't start pitching on us. So it's starting to kind of glide to that side. So I'm gonna stop right here and open it up. Drop it down. Actually, always check to make sure your doors aren't unlocked first. It looks like it's pretty locked up. Grab our wedge, our long reach tool.
horns. It's kind of nice though. It causes the tension that we want in this situation. So we're hoping that she'll come out and make contact. We do have a guy coming out, but I'm not going to wait for him because it's not her. If we saw her coming out, I'd wait and talk with her because again, she can make a payment. We can leave the vehicle here. I'd rather, but that guy's with security and he tells me to get off the premises. Don't want to have to deal with a trespassing issue, so we're out of here. Get this one transported and on to the next one.